All right, we're going to slide back into this passenger rear quarter and start take, tackling it. Uh, before I could do anything here or anywhere else in the Jeep, really, I had to take care of one big thing, and that is remove the gas tank and flush out the lines, the gas lines, because I can't grind or do any welding on any other part of this Jeep. You know, the filler tube's back here, and the gas tank was here, and the right lines run up the, the driver's side. So anyway, we got the gas tank out, got that taken care of. So um, next thing I did is I actually went ahead and cut out this section here. This was there's some rot, real bad rot right here. Cut that out. I wanted to investigate what was underneath that and how that was uh, how I'm gonna play that out. But where I'm gonna start is a bunch of pinholes, and then I think pinholes are wrong, the wrong word. Screw holes. Um, this Jeep originally had a soft top on it, and they had they had snaps everywhere. And then not only that, but the the top gets loose, so they they screw in new holes and adjust the snaps and stuff. So there's, I counted 37 holes, small pinholes or screw holes that I've got to plug in. So I'm actually going to start there. I'm going to run off some of this paint and uh, start welding in those holes. All right, let's try and make this patch. Uh, it's just a small rectangular piece, but it's got this rib in here. These ribs were originally put in here so that um, gives this piece strength and so it doesn't tin can and stuff. And I could very easily thought about just cheating and just putting a straight piece in there, bending it, you know, mashing it flat and trying to get it in there. But I think I will just figure out how to make a jig that's going to help me put this little rib in there. This side will just be bent up a little bit to match. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to have a, a bed liner put on it as well as uh, ultimately carpet. So you're not going to see any of this. But I do want to get it put in there kind of straight. So let's go, uh, let's go make a jig. All right, here's a simple jig that I made, just a two by four with a little bit of uh, extra meat in these two areas give me a one inch gap and that's going to match up we went ahead and marked where I need that bubble I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to actually kind of clamp it down we're just going to lightly beat on this just to get a, a nice dish in that so let's do that all right so here's our piece of metal in the jig I got these clamps on here these aren't they're spring loaded so it should allow the metal to come in if it needs to as I start beating down in here but I think we just got to kind of give it a try and see where we roll
Look at that. That's just about there. The key is it's working. It's the, the biggest thing. That profile, I believe, is perfect. We'll take it off and go to check it out. I got some fiberglass laid down just to kind of cover those seams and stuff and smooth this out a little bit. I'm going to now sand this down and I'm going to use my 5 inch electric sander just because uh, with this rib I really need to be able to get in here a little better. That 6 inch was wide enough it, it was giving me a little trouble so uh, we get this sanded off. Alright, here is how this finished out. I'm real pleased with it. It's got the little rib in there for strength. Uh, you can see the fiberglass here. We got it blended out real nice. Uh, it's got a little bit of a wave in it. I'm not worried about it. After the epoxy primer, this is going to get a bed liner on top of that. It'll have a texture to it. As well as, also I'm going to finish it off with carpet so you're not going to see it at all anyway. But uh, we got that all done. Now we've got to turn back and re-sand the, the I'm gonna call it the trunk area or the the bed area of the of the Jeep, as well as this all this interior stuff about to get into epoxy primer. We're gonna sand it all down. This will be the fifth time we've sanded this. Uh, you know, we we sanded it down, and then the next thing it rained for a couple of weeks, and and I could I didn't want to paint during the during the rain, and uh, by the time we came back, we, I could see the sense of a little flash rush. So we sanded it again. Then I saw another place I wanted to repair, so it, it just went on and on. But we're going to sand all this down. Um, the inside as well as the whole passenger side of the Jeep is ready uh, for its final sand. We're going to get, and then we'll get this whole thing in epoxy primer. So it looks like we got a lot more uh, just surface sanding to do, and, and then we'll be ready to move on. We just finished up all the sanding, so all that's done. And then we actually took a blow hose, and I blew this blew this room off. I don't have a big shop, so I, we started with the ceiling, blew the ceiling off, blew all the things that are around the building off, and uh, got it out the door. And we actually let it, the room sit with some fans blowing all that air dust outside for two hours. So um, we've wiped this down with a pre-paint um, solution. Um, actually, we use Demon and Natured Alcohol. I think that's a pretty good thing to use. Uh, we're about to tack rag it off and get some paint on it. So we'll bring you back when we get that started.
Well, it's the next day and everything dried up. Uh, there's a little bit of evidence of dust. I'm not too worried about that. Um, I did review last night's uh, spraying footage and, and notice I was actually a little bit too close. I think I need to back up a little bit and then slow down. I think I'll get a little better coverage. There's only actually one spot I was really surprised. I had a little bit of a run and uh, we can deal with that. Uh, in fact, on the outside, we'll get that um, s smoothed down and then ultimately that outside down the road is going to get a very thin layer of uh, body filler and uh, try and just get a lot of the spot welds. You know, when they make these Jeeps, they just, they uh, do a lot of spot welds on the body and they don't clean them up. Um, you know, these were supposed to be utility, the first utility vehicle or so, but anyway, I want to, I want to try my hand at getting that, those panels smooth. So let me give you a little shot of the, uh, the other side on the passenger side. Here's a final look at the passenger side. It turned out really nice. There, there is a little bit of evidence of where I had the fiberglass filler over all those small pinholes, uh, the welds on those pinholes. You can actually see the transition a little bit different there. I don't know if that means it needs a third coat or not. I'm not going to do that at this time. Uh, I've got to finish the other uh, inside of the, of the tub and the uh, driver's side of the tub. And then ultimately the tub comes off the frame. And uh, i got to work on the bottom side. And so I just wanted to get this coated so it won't rust anymore. And at least get a, a good look at how, what kind of uh, other waves i got to do. I'll be doing body work on top of this. And, uh, and actually thinking ahead of that body work, I did pick up a new tool, and I'm going to show you that right now. Most body repair man will tell you there's no straight panels on a vehicle, but uh, this Jeep may, may challenge that statement. This is an air file. Uh, it's made by Viking, which I believe this thing is you know, brand new, might be a $250, $280 tool. I got this used on, on eBay, actually, for $60. Uh, looks like it's in pretty good condition. I might end up changing the, this bottom pad on there, give me a nice flat surface. There's a little crease right down in here. Um, but I thought this would be a great tool that once we get the body, the tub, back on the frame and I start really focusing on um, body work, putting body filler, a thin coat of body filler over those panels that I can really get it straight with this. So always looking ahead at uh, what may be going next and trying to acquire uh, tools that are right for the job. So uh, this is my, my newest tool and um, I think I'm going to enjoy it. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode. Uh, sorry it's been so long since we've put one out. Uh, the summer heat just just was uh, kind of unbearable down here with all the safety equipment and, and just you know, tons of sweat. And it just I just didn't feel like it was fun. And I want to I want this project to stay fun. So, you know, between that and a little bit of health issues, I just kind of made a pause on the thing. But anyway, we're back on it. And um, what I'll do next time is uh, I've got some used OEM parts that I've picked up, um, basically a, a hood and a fender. I'll share those with you as well as I think we're going to change gears just a little bit instead of continuing some body work. Uh, and really before I can get to that driver's side, I got to get some things out. So we're going to, we're going to, next time I think we'll take the dash out, inspect what's going on behind the dash, blower motors, that type of stuff, anything under the dash. Um, it'll also help us make some decisions on uh, the new fuse box that we're going to put in the whole thing. Probably all new wiring and stuff like that, but I need to get the steering wheel out and the uh, all the brake um, gas cluster, that type of uh, gas brake pedal cluster. Uh, that'll give us room to do that passenger side. So we'll probably shift gears there. I also picked up another big part. I uh, went ahead and found uh, sourced on, I think it was Craigslist and actually got it out of Michigan, was my Dana 300. So we got that in the house. I've already got the repair kit for that. Probably the next video or two, we'll be actually rebuilding that Dana 300. So uh, get that prepped to go. So anyway, um, glad you stuck around. Uh, appreciate all my subscribers. It, it, it's uh, and between subscribers and all the the, the great comments and stuff like that, we're we're just tickled to death with what we're doing here. And uh, it, again, it's a great project, father son type project, and uh, we're really enjoying ourselves. So um, thank you again for sticking around, and we'll see more about all this next time. Jack it up.